Greetings and welcome to episode 5 of The Yellowed Pages, a channel dedicated to old books and ephemera. I'm Liz and I'll be your guide. Today's, um, today's episode is dedicated to some old cookbooks that I have. I've been collecting cookbooks for quite a few years and these are just some of them. I've got like 10 small ones. I won't go into any depth in them. Uh, a couple of them are family cookbooks. The rest of them I've gotten at thrift stores or estate sales or library book sales. And some of them I get because I think there are recipes in them that might be interesting and others just because I happen to like the graphics. <laughs> this first one is uh, was my mother's. And it's called Grandmother's Favorite Recipes. And I know it was my mom's because she drew in. This would have been blank here, but she was an artist. And so she had to uh, fill in the the face there. <laughs> so this one, and this was a hunter's rabbit stew. That's her handwriting. I never actually knew her to make a rabbit stew. But anyway... Uh, this is the National Federation of Grandmother Clubs of America, 1955. This book is dedicated in appreciation and affection to Marie K. Brown, a gracious lady founder and first president of the National Federation of Grandmother Clubs of America. I wonder if those still exist. We've got bread and cakes and casseroles, Christmas menu, desserts, pastries, salads, Vegetables, holiday banana tea bread, cheese horns, butter coffee cake, old-fashioned brown sugar cookies. That's also my mom's handwriting. Raw apple cake, banana cake. Oh, that raw apple cake sounds kind of good. I'm always looking for new recipes to try. I get tired of eating the same thing over and over again for lunch and dinner. Afternoon tea donuts, although these are all, <laughs> all desserts so far. I do have to eat something other than desserts, although I don't know why. Swedish pie crust, peanut pie, peanut butter pie, frozen lemon pie. Double deck Bing cherry salad. Hmm. Jill avocado salad. I'm not a fan of fan of, fan of avocados. But surprisingly, for a grandmother's cookbook, there's very little dedicated to vegetables. You go, grandmas. It's, it's mostly desserts. <laughs> That is Grandmother's Favorite Recipes. Next is, let's see, Jessie Marie DeBoat's cookbook. And I think this one my brother-in-law was getting rid of at a yard sale. And I just brought it home with me out of curiosity and it's missing several pages in the front so I'm not sure what year this is but this has vitamin chart calorie calorie charts menus for workers average measures for the diabetic Oh, this was, I think the measures in that, it was um, reducing weight sanely, which makes sense. Uh, saccharine, saccharine solution for liquid sweetening. Meal planning and preparation. Meats. Shrimps. Baked with eggs, skewered fish, lima beans, Newfoundshire, Newfoundshire, yeah, it's a cheese, I know that, I've used it in uh, a recipe. 
was pretty good. So that is Jesse Marie DeBoat's cookbook. Next we have the Loyalty Cookbook, Book 5, from the Native Daughters of the Golden West. And I know I found this one at the Humane Society thrift store. I got a couple of them. <clears throat> Excuse me. They had, I don't know, four or five of mostly the same edition. Uh, this is the Loyalty Cookbook, Native Daughters of the Golden West, compiled and published by Willow Borba. Sebastopol, Sonoma County, California. And they do still exist because I contacted them to see if they wanted one of these books and I think eventually they got back to me and said that uh, they'd be interested if I wanted to get rid of one of them. And it's from evidently the, um, the group is broken up into parlors. The daughter, Native Daughters of the Golden West is broken up into parlors like like troops or groups or whatever you want to call them because we've got member of Santa Rosa Parlor, uh, Verdugo Parlor, Manzanita Parlor. So I thought that was interesting because I had never even heard of the Daughters of the Golden West. There's that one. Next is Shrimp Cookery. And this is probably one of those that I bought because I liked, I liked the graphics. And I get a hankering for shrimp every once in a while. And I don't make it that often because it's kind of pricey. But this one, and I just actually realized it. It says, here's to, here's to good cooking, signed Helen Worth. So it's signed by the author. And it's a first edition Uh, dated 1952. How to buy shrimp, how to prepare shrimp, general instructions for cooking shrimp. I used to like to get Market Day had a good um, herbed garlic shrimp. But then they, I don't know if they, they went out of business or I don't know if they were sold to someone. But they, <clears throat> excuse me, it was sold through uh, the schools, or a school that my sister was working for at the time. And I missed their, the herbed garlic shrimp, and they had some of these little um, apple dumpling things that were really tasty that I liked. Actually, everything, pretty much everything I'd gotten from them was good. But so this is kind of like the I've got a I've got a Bubba Gump uh, cookbook too for shrimp cookbook. But here Helen Worth was ahead of ahead of her time. She was ahead of Bubba Gump and Forrest Gump, Bubba and Forrest Gump, shrimp Creole. So that's the shrimp cookery. This one, I think, may have been my grandmother's because it has, looks like it has her name in the front. But, um, so this is the Good Housekeeping Book of Good Meals, How to Prepare and Serve Them, A Guide to Meal Planning, Cooking, and Serving, the Good Housekeeping Institute. Catherine A. Fisher, director. Uh, first edition printed February 1927. And sixth edition, edition printed August 1928. So my grandmother would have been, whenever she got it, would have been. 27 or 28, 
about that time because my mom was born in September 1922. So, I don't know. My grandmother was a good cook. I don't know that she... It looks like it was used, so maybe she did did use it, but I never knew her to really use a cookbook. I think she just cooked stuff the way she wanted to. It always turned out good. She and my mom are both good cooks. So that's good meals and how to prepare them. This poor thing has definitely seen better days. Next is the burger book. And this is one that I think I probably <laughs> I probably got because of the graphics. Who wouldn't love that? This is the burger book by Master Chef Louis P. DeGoy, maybe, author of the Gold Cookbook. Hamburgers glorified in 182 tempting recipes. And this has a clipping somebody cut out in the front. It says, this one sounds delicious. Veal cutlet with chocolate sauce and chopped peanuts. Mary collects recipes from the newspapers. Sometimes they turn out even more gruesome than they sound. That's true. I like to try different recipes. I've had some epic failures and some some uh, really good successes. So luckily the successes out outnumber the failures. But when I fail, I fail really, really big. Bungalow burger dinner, broiled spicy burgers, budget burger stewed dinner, Burger, applesauce, casserole. I don't know about that one. Burger, pot roast dinner. Burger, rarebit. Burger and sauerkraut balls. I don't know. Burger soup. Burger spaghetti. Burger stuffed tomatoes. Burger loaves. I assume that's like a meatloaf. Burger cheese layer loaf, burger onion layer loaf, all kinds of loafs. Oh, burger pickle stuff loaf, burger ribbon loaf. Hmm. Well, there you go. 182 ways to make a hamburger. Next is. The United States Regional Cookbook, edited by Ruth uh, Burr, I can't pronounce her name, Burr, Burlsheimer. I think I've got another book by her, too. This has general auxiliary recipes, New England, Southern, Pennsylvania Dutch, Creole, Michigan Dutch, Mississippi Valley, Wisconsin Dutch, Minnesota Scandinavian, Southwestern Cookbook, Western Cookbook, and Cosmopolitan American Cookbook. Got New England, bean soup, clear soup. Egg and cheese dish. Johnny cake, blueberry cake, that sounds good. Hmm. Spiced currants, paradise jelly, southern cookbook with a politically incorrect graphics. Let's see. Pigs and blankets. So oh, they use oysters. Hmm. And shrimp. Well, bacon, rather. Oysters and bacon. Shrimp avocado cocktail. Kentucky burgoo. Okra soup. I'm not a fan of okra. 
Oh my. Ribs of Keith, Memphis, sweet breads of mushrooms, chitterlings, fried chicken, Maryland, Kentucky fried chicken, buttermilk pie, jelly pie, Florida Persian lime pie, bride's cake, orange spun cake, fruit cake. Strawberry jam cake. That sounds good. I'm getting hungry now. Pennsylvania Dutch cookbook. Flash and, flash and cost. Literally, meat and cheese to be served with beer. Oh, this one. Hamburg eel soup. I think I'll have to pass on that. Thank you. Wiener Schnitzel, Scrapple, Schnitzel Meat, Hutzla, Vets and cooking plum cake. Creole cookbook. Jambalaya shrimp. Crabs and rice. Louisiana eggplant casserole, puff paste, declares, mm. Napoleon's, flaming coffee, cafe creole, champagne cup, claret lemonade, brandied peaches, Now we get into the Michigan Dutch. Oyster salad, red cabbage salad, graham bread. Dutch apple cake. Oops. Sorry. Brandy and raisins. Canapes. Oops, wait a minute. Started a new area here. Mississippi Valley Cookbook. Wisconsin Dutch cookbook. We'll have crawfish, pickled herring, lake trout with horseradish sauce. Sauerkraut Viennese. Hmm. Uh, Minnesota Scandinavian. Lutefisk, I've heard of that. Fish souffle, pickled herring, salt dry herring, jelly veal. Ugh. Uh, Southwestern cookbook. 
Cavs liver, liver Spanish style. Mm -hmm. Hot tamales, Santa Fe tacos, chili mole. Polo Orlando. Chicken with mole sauce. Chili's Romanos. Chili's Rijoles. Phoenix enchiladas. Fresh apricot upside down cake. Patchy acorn soup. Mesquite bean cake. Uh, Western cookbook. Oops, sukiyaki, veal rolls with olive sauce, pork chops on casserole, barbecue spare ribs, eggs caliente, huevos pimentos, a little bit of Every influence in the Western cookbook, Asian, Mexican, New England, everybody that went West brought their own recipes with them. So that is the United States Regional Cookbook. Next is this cute little Cutco cookbook. And Cutco, well, it's the world's best, uh, the world's finest cutlery. <laughs> if you, they, they still are, they still make kitchen knives. And I recently got one of my holy grails. I got the, the Cutco Bakelite knife holder an online auction that I've been looking at for years. This is copyright 1961. And this is kind of nice because it's got, it shows you this is a French chef's knife and what to use it for and how to use it. The trimmer, butcher's knife, carving knife, slicer, paring knife, spatula, carving fork and turning fork. Uh, how to roast, how to deep fat fry, the different cuts of meat. There's beef cuts, veal cuts, pork cuts, lamb cuts. And the bind, the bind guide and other suggestions. And then we get into some of the recipes and again I just like the I like the graphics Your ham and pork and lamb and veal beef sauce poultry and outdoor cooking. So that's the cute little Cutco cookbook that they put out. And here is the American Woman's Cookbook by Ruth Berholzheimer. She's the one that did one of the other books. Uh, this I can't make out the <laughs> I can't make out the inscription. Uh, she's the director of the Culinary Arts Institute. Copyright 1944. Copyright 1938. So came out. Uh, during the Depression, and then it's still the World War II was still going on. It looks like when it was last copyrighted. At least this, at least this book that I have. It 
have some color plates here. Potato bread, world oat bread. Oh, that's nice kinds of glasses. A table tumbler, highball tumbler, iced tea tumbler. Silverware, knives and forks, a list of useful serving pieces, spoons, linen, tablecloths, napkin, monogramming. Prune rye bread, yum, yum. Johnny Cake, Sally Lung, Quick Nut bread, potato bread, rolled up bread, gluten bread. Hmm. Black bean soup, borscht. I've never had borscht. Chicken gumbo, bouillabaisse. Oh, there's another chart for meats. Hand broiled steak. Egg dishes, vegetarian oh vegetarian dishes. Candies and desserts. Rhubarb marmalade conserve, cranberry conserve, guava jelly. So that was the American Woman's Cookbook. not least is Prudence Penny's cookbook and this one was my mom's and my dad got it for her in February of 48 <laughs> and my parents were married in November of 1946 and my oldest sister was born in August of 48 so, and this was, this first reprint edition is from 1947. The copyright was 1939. Dedicated to all the men in the world who like to eat. And I think... If I'm remembering correctly, the story behind this is that there was a store that had a fire downtown and this book got some water damage and so it was on sale or free or something and so my dad went down and got it from my mom. <laughs> if I'm remembering that correctly. Oh, here's another recipe for borscht. beef hash. I like hash. Capons, chicken a la king, braised fowl. Potato cakes. salad. Hmm. Hmm. I'll have to try that. I'm always looking for something new to make for lunches and dinners. Get tired of the same thing all the time. So sometimes I do I do get into these cookbooks just out of curiosity and try something and sometimes it's a success and sometimes not so much. But I say 99% of the time it's it's pretty good, at least edible. There have been times where there was something that was just so bad that I I could only like eat it once or twice, and it's like, nope, can't do this anymore. I don't know if it was my cooking or the recipe that just really stuck, but 
Oh, and this one, this one has um, favorite recipes of the movie stars, too. So you got Wallace Beery's Baked Beans, Pat O'Brien's English Beefsteak Pie, Robert Montgomery's Bouillabaisse from New Orleans, uh, let's see, Spencer Tracy's Baked Stuffed Fish, James Stewart's Baked Ham, Sautéed Kidneys a la William Powell, Dick Powell's Baked Noodles, Slim Somerville's Pineapple Omelette, Gary Cooper's Pancakes, Johnny Weissmuller's Raisin Pie, Victor McLaughlin's Ruby Pie, Don Amici's Spaghetti, Joel McRae's Barbecued Steak, I love Joel McRae, Clark Gable's Broiled Steak, Robert Young's Steak and Kidney Pie, along with Robert Young's Rich Pastry, and Tyrone Powers' Russian Steak. Well, now that I'm starving to death, i got to go get something to eat. But that brings an end to Episode 5 of the Yellowed Pages on Cookbooks. And thank you for watching. Happy cooking, happy reading, and take care. Bye.